Um, here at the center we are trying to introduce new technologies to do ecological studies, both for the long-term ecological studies as well as species-related uh, ecological studies. And so we have, uh, in the past few years, introduced uh, genetics uh, to help us understand our nature. Recently we have also been experimenting with uh, a drone system to image our landscape. Okay, I'm Simon Poulton. I'm working at the University of East Anglia in the UK and my research interest for coming to Nepal is small mammals. I'm particularly interested in the community and population structures at different altitudes. So we're here now in a, a place called Kerawa at about 1500 meters and over the next two weeks we'll be climbing at 500 meter intervals up to 4000 meters. And we are live catching small mammals in these traps um, designed designed specifically for this project and also uh, the other the main um, thrust of the work is to uh, is to live catching in in these traps and taking tiny tissue samples to to do DNA barcoding which will enable us firstly to identify the species correctly because there are many species here and secondly to look at uh, relatedness and to look at other aspects of their, of their genomes at different altitudes. Me, I'm Brian Galloway from Boston, Massachusetts, USA, here with the Center for Molecular Dynamics Nepal in the field, uh, a little bit north of Pokhara. Um, out here working with a drone uh, in sort of a prototyping fashion, sort of a proof of concept. Um, this here is a Parrot 2.0 AR drone. It is a uh, GPS capable, um, controlled through a Wi-Fi protocol. Um, and we are out here today taking some scenery shots. Simon, one of our, uh, or his uh, field research, uh, involves genetic studies of uh, small mammals in the field. And this is, we're here today for sort of the novel application of using drones um, and automated aerial surveillance uh, to help and assist in that. A 720p HD camera. On the bottom of the drone is another HD camera uh, that can take shots from either the front or straight down. Uh, it's got a sonar guidance or for its altimeter. Uh, it is basically what they call the quadcopter design. And uh, very lightweight, um, fairly straightforward to operate. Um, you can even have uh, children fly these things if they're good at cyber games. But uh, to control one um, in the field is a little more difficult. Um, basically, this thing will lift through these blades, go up, take pictures, maneuver in whichever way you'd like it to, um, and then return to base with that footage. We believe that conservation of our natural heritage is the top priority. With fast dwindling habitats and increasing human population pressure, the need for conservation of wildlife species has become even more pressing. For long-term sustainability, we have to strike a fine balance between human development and wildlife conservation. At the same time, we also have to comprehend and appreciate the delicate relationships between all the living things and how they are, they are all intricately woven in a fabric of life. Achieving conservation goals is not an easy affair. It is as complicated as our nature itself. Human-related interests cannot be ignored. At the same time, it should not be on the expense of conservation. So what is the balance? Perhaps technology can help us. New and emerging technologies are rapidly being introduced, and some of them hold promise of providing tools to solve some of the conservation problems. We have yet to understand our nature. There are many new species we have not identified. Species we know have not been studied well. Certainly dynamics of species interactions are yet to be fully understood. Genetic-based technology holds a very strong promise of identifying new species, characterizing the ones that we are not completely sure of, conducting population census of the elusive and endangered species like tigers. More importantly, DNA-based forensic tools can aid in curtailing one of the biggest threats to wildlife conservation today, poaching. We have been working in conservation area in Nepal for the last four years, 
uh, having introduced conservation genetics for the first time in Nepal, our organization has opened up many doors to build capacity in the field of science and technology in general, and conservation genetics in particular. But the greatest benefit of introducing and working with new technologies to serve conservation needs is creating an environment of awareness and excitement among young people who will then join in and provide long-term sustainability to our conservation efforts. We strongly believe that striking that balance it is achievable with the use of new technology.